how's it going? So a couple of things today. First off, I'm standing out on our lane next to where we just put all of the brand new Autumn Blaze maple trees and we are going to get those planted today. Um, so you might be able to see right here, the maple tree is just laying down. It is a little bit breezy out, which is not ideal. We actually came out early this morning and tipped them all over ourselves because when it's breezy and you have containerized plants, it's best just to kind of preventatively lay them down instead of have them fall down on their own and accidentally break a big branch that you don't want to have broken or break something else on the way down. Um, so anyway, we've got all of the holes prepared, dug I should say, look like little volcanoes. Uh, we rented an auger, a 36 inch auger because we have 25 of these trees to get in the ground. And the guys, we have a couple guys that are gonna be helping with that with this project today. Aaron and I are going to plant one just so that we can show you how we do it and the amendments we're using. And then they're gonna come along and finish the rest because I'm not supposed to be doing big projects like this right now being pregnant. So it's kind of perfect time to get all the big trees. I'm like, hey, are there any other big trees <laughs> that we should get right now? So I don't have to be responsible for digging holes. Um, so anyway, we'll start with that and then I'll go work on the window box while they're finishing up and then we'll take a big tour in the end. So I don't know if you guys can see them up there. They're working on our neighbor's trees. It's the most wonderful thing when you have neighbors who care about the way their property looks and the way, I don't know, isn't it so nice? Yeah. Like they saw what we were doing out here and they're like, hey, while you're at it. <laughs> come do ours and come, we'll pay for it. Yeah, we'll pay for it if you just like let us know. We'll write you a check. So. Uh, they have five maple trees the same as ours, spaced exactly the same. We all have sprinklers. We had a, uh, our landscaper install all of them. In fact, we're going to be watering them off of our well because it's really not that many, like much more. So they'll all run in the same zone. And so all the sprinklers are along the fence line. In fact, I think there are still flags. We had them installed on the fence line and shooting this way instead of along the road. So that like if we have snow and you can't see, we don't want anybody to accidentally run over sprinklers and break them right there and they're just all along the fence so after these are planted we should be able to seed grass at least on this side this fall yeah exciting so real quick before we get into the planting of these trees autumn blaze maples are a really good tree in our area and i think that's really important when you're doing something in a bigger scale if you're planting a lane of trees you don't want to plant something that's susceptible to disease or insect and then have you know one here or there start to die off through the years. You want something that's been really good consistently in your area. And the Autumn Blaze Maples have been for us. They are virtually free of any disease or pest issues that I know of or that we deal with here. Uh, the only thing that maples tend to show in our area is chlorosis because of our high, high soil pH. So we are adding amendments in to try to preventatively take care of that problem. And when a plant shows chlorosis, the leaves start to yellow while the veins stay dark, dark green. And it's not a major issue, especially if you correct it early, but e even better if you preventatively treat the soil, which we need to do anyway, because our soil is lacking some things that these plants and most plants need. Another question I saw a lot of when we did our video about the trees arriving, we were just so excited that we decided to film that as well. Um, a lot of you guys asked whether or not these trees are seedless. Like, do they produce those little helicopters? And I think in the beginning, they were thought to be seedless. And I think most of the time they are, but you can't say that they're 100% seedless. I think they were originally thought to only create male uh, fruit or male seeds instead of male and female both. And I think in some cases they can produce them, but they're virtually seedless. And in our area, I haven't noticed any autumn blazes getting them. So we'll see what happens. Erin, we might have like 20 trees that are clean and five trees with seeds, who knows? Um, but it's not usually a huge problem here, but I get that. Like that's a huge consideration sure. when you're planting this many trees, you wanna make sure like, am I gonna have a massive mess? Do I have to treat them for insects? And all of those kinds of things. So anyway, all of that said, I think we should plant one. Or should I say, I think you should plant one. Sure. <laughs> Here are the things that we are going to use in this hole. We've talked about this a few times already recently, but we always use a starter fertilizer no matter what. We've been using that for years and it works really, really well. And then these are a couple of things that we're trying out to help condition our soil, to bring the pH down. So what happens is when you have high pH soil, it binds up the nutrients in your soil. So there may be iron present. 
in the soil, it might be there, but it's not, it's not available for the trees to utilize. So then they start showing the chlorosis. So our goal is to bring the pH down and help condition that soil so it unlocks those nutrients and makes them available for the tree. So that's kind of our attack plan. And by using the soil acidifier to help bring the pH down and the land and sea compost, which is a little bit more of an acid-based compost, we're hoping that that helps the tree. And so we're doing all of this in the beginning, but this is not something we're gonna stop. When you're dealing with soil issues, a lot of times it's being consistent. So the Biotone Starter Fertilizer, we don't use other than when we plant, but we are going to probably be attacking this soil with soil acidifier. Um, and then proper tree, like tree tone fertilizer for the first couple of years, just to make sure everything is going well at the beginning of these beautiful trees lives in our property. So a real quick look at the bags, that's a land and sea. I have had the best success with this stuff this year. If you have followed along with our cut flower garden or our raised bed garden, I'm just having phenomenal luck with it. And then that's the soil acidifier. One other thing, these amendments are just the ones we're using because of our specific soil makeup. And so depending on your soil pH and what you've got going on, you may not need to use some of these things. You may need to use something different. I think in every case, Biotone Starter Fertilizer is amazing. I think a good compost is great. But you know, if you have low pH soil or more acid soil, soil acidifier may be completely unnecessary for you. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. All right, so here's the first hole. There's so many of them. Oh, it's gonna be gorgeous. I do think that the hole was dug a little bit too deep. It's really hard to tell with that great big auger when you're in the skid steer to know like how deep you're actually going. But it's always good to make sure you're not planting your root ball too deep. It's better to bump it up a little higher than it is to have it sunk too low. So I'm gonna get in here real quick. I'd like to try to measure where the- you me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try to measure where the soil level is versus how deep this hole is. See right here, you can see the current soil level. That's about where it's at. So I'll just use my shovel and go like this. It's about how deep the hole is. I think we're gonna have to add like four to six inches so that it bumps the root ball up properly. <laughs> Looks like the truck is here to pick up the skid steer with the auger. <laughs> What was he gonna do? What happened to you? <laughs> Forgot to turn the hose off before I un undid it. I can be involved in this part. This isn't too heavy a work. Try again. It's about right. I think that looks really good. I think it's the right level. So we'll add the land and seat compost next okay. and the other goodies. We're doing one full bag per tree thing. Not a full bag oh, of those, yeah, yeah, kidding. Yeah. let me clarify. Yeah, I think just drop it in. Looks good. So this is a Biotone starter fertilizer. Get out of the way of the wind there. I would try to pour it closer so you're not wasting oh. a bunch to wind. There's still that's, some in there. That's just me though. <laughs> So that's what we got going so far. Soil acidifier. That's probably good. Okay. I'll give it a little stir with the shovel. Okay. Turn it up a little bit right there. Okay. You kind of have to take into account that too, since it's so kind of fluffy and like I can compact it a little bit, but not all the way and the soil will settle. So the tree will eventually settle a little bit further down into the ground. Bolt cutter time. This looks like a pain, but it's honestly way easier than having it in a huge plastic container. Look at that root ball. That is big. I've got a pruning saw right here. I'm just gonna score the root ball just lightly like that about every eight inches or so. It's not severely root bound, but I'm just gonna do this to break up any 
of these that might be circling a little bit too much. That's usually sufficient. Can you manage that on your own? Are you sure? Look at that huge tree. Nice. He did it. I do think it needs to be rotated a little bit. <laughs> Which way? Uh, clockwise. Yeah. <laughs> okay, try that right there a little bit. So hard to tell because of the wind. The wind is just kind of the worst right now. Let me back way up real quick. I kind of want to make sure it's lined up with these other trees too, because I want them to look in a straight line. And all five of these are done. It does look good, but Erin, I wonder, I mean, the canopy is blowing because of the wind, but it's very much so heavier on this side, which is probably the best side to be heavier on because we are gonna be limbing these up quite significantly. So we're gonna introduce some water into the hole here, make sure the root ball is fully saturated. Ugh, get my foot out of there. Okay, it looks like uh, just a tiny bit like this way. Yep, so it lines with the fence post, that's perfect. And, oh dang. <laughs> Aaron, can you move to the left, please? Thank you, too much. That looks good. Okay, now we need to pack soil in like our lives depend on it. Oh, this soil level was perfect. So when you're backfilling around the root ball, you make sure like, to pack it in really tight so there's no air, air pockets. But you can also draw soil over that root ball, the original root ball, and just kind of taper it toward the trunk so you're not actually putting new soil up here, but that it all blends in with the area. All done with one tree. <laughs> I think it looks really, really good. So a couple of things, we are gonna get some metal tooth rakes out here and just smooth all of this out um, because there are some lumpy spots and we are planning on seeding grass over here next week. So exciting. There, it's gonna be, there's gonna be so much green over here and just, nice. yeah, in no time at all. Um, the other thing, the root ball is sitting above grade slightly, but that will most likely settle a little bit over just even the next couple of days once we start really deep soaking these trees. And then also once we start irrigating this whole area with grass, uh, the whole area will settle a bit anyway. In terms of staking the trees, it's best if you don't have to stake a tree. Um, so what we'll do, I mean, it's windy, which makes it not ideal to be planting right now, but it's kind of our window of opportunity. We want to get these in the ground early enough, and usually the rule of thumb is getting them in, ground, in the ground six to eight weeks before your first hard frost, which means something below 28 degrees. Um, so they have a chance to root in a little bit before winter sets in. And I think we have at least it will fall somewhere in that window so long as we got them in the ground this week so that's why we're still going for it even though it's windy out here uh, we will be deep soaking these trees one because they're big and brand new two because it is windy and it is drying things out um, and then we will make sure as we go into winter even though it's getting like the trees will go dormant we still don't want them to dry out completely so if we happen to have a dry winter we will come out here splash a little bit of water on them every once in a while just to make sure their root balls don't dry out completely and that they're not just we want them to feel welcome in their new home basically oh and back to staking so what we'll do over the next couple of days it's supposed to be slightly breezy tomorrow too we'll just come rock them in their hole a little bit and tamp more soil around their root ball if we have to typically we don't have to stake anything even though we have such high winds um, if we notice a lean or anything on all on any of these, we will come in and stake if we have to, but it's better for the tree, better for the strength of the tree and the overall health of the tree if you um, don't need to do that at any point. So anyway, the guys have taken a lunch. So when they get back, they will continue on planting these trees and we will set up cameras so you can kind of see them all going. It's very exciting. I'm so so happy to have this project done and in the meantime i'm going to go plant up a window box so let's head toward the house and it hopefully isn't as windy over there as it is out here oh now aaron's taken after the neighbor's tree for crying out loud i cannot leave him alone for any amount of time i can't turn my back on you aaron he has permission to trim this tree just fyi <laughs> that does look better i think we're going to uh, do just a little minor like limb up right here because it's actually hitting our normal trucks so if anything bigger tries to get through here we don't want to damage their tree mainly 
so if it's kind of kind of trimmed up and that's the goal in the end anyway right so these will grow up and then we'll have a nice carved out uh, canopy that's something else I didn't really talk about was the canopy so because these trees get so big usually between 50 and 60 feet tall 40 feet wide we are going to have to can or trim them up trim a canopy in the is that right canopy trim the, a tunnel through the canopy of the tree down the lane probably will max out at about 25 feet uh, in the middle of the lane and we'll kind of taper it down toward the tree we wanted to pick trees that were big enough to handle that if you were to plant a 30 foot growing tree and you had to limit up 25 feet in the center that would look really odd so we needed to plant something that had like this massive size in the end so that it's kind of like rules of the rule of thirds you want the top third to still be there and then you can kind of trim up the bottom third and it still looks very proportional and appropriate that's the goal <laughs> proportional and appropriate <laughs> this gorgeous oh I just love it so much you do have to picture it with you know the enclosure for the dumpster and the fence gone as well as this stuff gone you know the planter and the fence there so it will open it up quite a bit but oh it's just it does so much for this space and the fact that we get to enjoy the structure the fall color possibly some Christmas lights makes me so happy we are just loving it. So today, you can see the hose is still kind of strung out here. We'll make sure to water them in really well again today. And the guys are working on running an irrigation line uh, down each side of the road. And then we'll run uh, individual emitters to each root ball. But we are gonna be seeding this side right here, the skinnier side with grass next week. So by winter, it should look really green and beautiful on this side. So just one more step done. And I do want to show you this area up here and kind of explain our driveway situation because I know that that was just a little bit confusing because we did have to skip a couple trees on that side, but it'll make sense here in a second. So we're looking the other direction now and you can see our first tree is right here, but we did not mirror it right here because it was actually going to have to be right in the gravel to match up. And we have our little gravel service road that rings around our entire property so that we can access the whole thing. And it just, honestly, it would have been too close to this tree right here. I think we would have ended up with some issues. So next you'll see, you know, we planted one tree. So skip a tree, there'll be a flower bed there. Tree, skip a tree. And then we started with the line there. And the reason, you can kind of see the tire tracks. That's where our new driveway is gonna come out. Uh, we did not wanna go in between two trees. Like had we planted here and here and put our driveway here, way too close. We wanted it to feel very open in that section right there because we're going to flare the road both this way and this way. So you can drive in this way or you can drive that way uh, and not ever feel like it's too tight. And what's gonna happen right now, our driveway goes straight and you go all the way around the house and then you curve right in front of the house. It's just a big circular driveway. This whole driveway section in front of the house is going away. So our circle is essentially just getting bigger. So you'll go straight in around the back side of the house and then you'll come out this side by the west side garden and you'll come through the new land and swing out this way. Uh, thus kind of creating a great big lawn area here. Cut flower garden won't be there. We'll have grass and shade trees and it'll all be connected to the front yard that's right by the house so that it looks like one piece of property instead of disjointed. So 25 trees in total planted and I'm so happy we decided to go with the bigger size. And I don't know how many years of difference there is between like these two inch caliper trees and say like a one inch caliper tree, but it's probably a few years. And so sometimes it's worth it, especially in a situation like this when you, well, I kind of just wanted it to be like, I don't know, like kind of amazing from the very beginning. But like if you were gonna be planting a bunch of willows, willows grow so fast, you can plant a little one and they grow like crazy and it's really not worth it to buy a bigger one. But on some trees, it's worth every extra penny. So Aaron and I, when we were out here with Benjamin last night, we were discussing like, okay, how many extension cords are we gonna need? <laughs> how many strands of Christmas lights per tree? Should we use them from another part of the lawn or yard? 
or should we get new ones or what should we do out here and should we do white lights or colorful lights should we swag the fence like Aaron usually does out here I mean the possibilities are starting to grow and then we're gonna have to decide where to allocate our Christmas light budget <laughs> this year so that is it for this video super exciting stuff you guys I am so surprised like I look at this piece of property and I'm like, well, dang, it's just still a big dusty bowl with a bunch of weeds. But we really have done a lot out here in terms of infrastructure. But having these trees here, something tangible, that's something that's going to stay is amazing. Because like the cut flower garden out here has been a crazy, amazing <laughs> project. It's gone really well, but it's not, it's temporary. All of that's gonna be torn down in another month. Everything will be gone from that space and moved to the back corner. So having these permanent things is just so fun. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Cannot wait to show you update shots. Like if we have a good fall for fall color, this is gonna be so great out here. So hope you guys are having a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Well, it looks like we have one leaf changing color. Starting to look awesome.